Yo, 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 it is your boy, the host, the Wolf of Crypto here. Got you guys another episode today of the Crypto Millionaire Journey. And the journey has taken us to Lima, Peru. Yes, that's right. I'm currently out here in Lima, Peru, um, doing some crypto business, of course. And... Uh, been out here for what almost a month it'll be about a month i believe next week and uh right now obviously out here it's actually winter time so it is a bit chilly it is a bit cold uh there's been more cloudy days than sunny days obviously i've seen some rain and stuff like that seen the sun about a couple times but not too much but um i gotta say first impressions pretty good uh this is my first time being out um this way uh i do know one thing i do miss not being on lockdown obviously uh, back home you don't have to wear a mask or anything like that and the lockdown's kind of lifted out here uh lockdown is still present they actually have a curfew as well um you actually have to wear two masks going to certain places so that's something that's obviously new to me but um i've done a little bit of exploring um obviously haven't done too much because you know this is more so of a business trip um have been to the beach noticed some uh didn't even know that they, uh, the beach that i went to was actually i guess known for you know some surfers so was out there just you know kind of you know take some leisure time join the view just seeing the city um i've actually had a chance to explore the city a little bit um gone around the city just to see some different you know historical places uh just see the city in general obviously the traffic out here now i know we got traffic back home but the traffic out here is actually pretty bad as well that was a uh, that's interesting to see and just how uh, the whole culture and how people interact with each other. I mean, uh, they're constantly always honking at each other, which I kind of find kind of funny because, you know, the way the roads are built out here, you know, there's only really two lanes uh, pretty much everywhere so far that I've seen. I mean, I think the only place I've been where I've seen maybe multiple lanes, I think is like more so on the outskirts of Lima, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. Um, but, you know, they obviously, before Copa America ended, got a chance to kind of experience, you know, how the nation uh, really takes in soccer and um, how much the nation, you know, obviously supports their team and stuff like that. So got a chance to experience uh, that a little bit, you know, being able to go into, you know, different bars and stuff like that, just getting a couple of drinks here and there and enjoying the food and ooh, I gotta say, the food has been, oh man, it's been very good. Uh, <laughs> uh, everything I've had so far since I've been out here has been really good. And also, too, it's actually pretty cheap. Um, you know, I always heard that, you know, I guess living out this way, you know, it doesn't cost you too much, and that is very true. I mean, I've been able to get some meals, uh, so, you know, meals that filling you up. For like <laughs> five bucks or less or you know if I'm getting a couple of meals maybe like for me and uh, with my friends or whatever because it be the meal still might cost under like 20 bucks so you don't really spend too much on food out here even same thing goes for uh, groceries and stuff like that grocery shopping out here uh, pretty cheap as well um, and then as far as shopping as well uh, I've been able to go to one of the malls. I mean, there's a couple of malls out here. Obviously, I might try to explore another mall in the city, uh, the mall that I've been to. I was not really shocked, but it was, uh, I'm trying to think the best way I could describe it as far as, you know, seeing stores that I recognize, but not just that, seeing stores that I recognize, but going into these stores and shopping, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> Some of these things that I'm buying out here, I mean, you know, way more cheaper compared to, you know, buying it back home and stuff like that. So shopping experience, even though I haven't done too much of that, 
has been cool. And then obviously trying to, you know, learn a little bit of Spanish here and there. Trying to use what I know from, you know, taking it back in college. Um, but as far as living off crypto, especially being out here, um, has been pretty, pretty easy. Uh, reason why I say that is because anywhere, any type of business that basically has the Visa or MasterCard logo, I'm able to go ahead and use my crypto cards because, you know, that's what I have as far as my crypto.com card. As you guys have heard me talk about that and their project, you know, is Visa. So, you know, I'm getting that cash back on every purchase. So everywhere I go. I just look out for a Visa or MasterCard logo, and I just simply use my cards. I uh, also have a Uphold card. Pretty sure you guys are familiar with uh, Uphold, and you guys have heard me talk about, talk about it here on my show. Um, and also, that's another card where you're getting 2% cash back in Bitcoin. So, you know, for me, the whole, you know, being able to live off crypto, not really needing uh, really cash, uh, you know, I haven't really needed to take out cash, even though, you know, I have exchanged cash just for, you know, uh, like taxis and stuff like that. Something where I guess you might obviously need it. But um, even if I needed to take out cash from, you know, my crypto.com card, I'm pretty sure I would be able to do that. Just got to find a ATM machine to do that. But um, it's possible, folks, like living off crypto. Uh, it's very doable. Um, as you guys are listening to this episode, you guys can hear from straight from me that, hey, you can travel to other places. And as long as uh, you have your crypto cards, I mean, you're, you're good to go. And those of you that know this, you know, Visa and MasterCard is probably, you know, one of the top two card companies that are accepted pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, but not just that, I've you know noticed that at certain uh, businesses, you know, even out here, they're actually using QR codes to uh, you know pay for whatever that they need. So seeing that infrastructure already in place, I mean, I would say if they had the right, uh, I guess, leadership to kind of transition into that crypto space. I mean, obviously. If you've been following the news, you've seen what El Salvador has done. You know, they're, you know, going ahead and making Bitcoin their legal tender as far as that country goes. And I know tomorrow, uh, I believe Paraguay will be making a decision as far as accepting Bitcoin as a legal tender and, and uh, depending on how that bill will look. From what I've been reading in the news and just finding on the articles and stuff like that, they, their bill might be a little bit different compared to El Salvador. Um, that's just coming from their government. So definitely curious to see how that's going to unfold. Um, that's something that you guys should obviously, you know, obviously pay attention to because, you know, from what I've been reading and hearing, depending on, you know, what decision Paraguay makes as far as uh, their Bitcoin bill, I know Argentina and I believe Brazil uh, might be next in line to propose some type of Bitcoin bill uh, to get into their country. And then also I heard uh, rumors about Mexico as well. So it seems like these uh, Latin American countries are, you know, kind of taking that foot forward of trying to figure out how they can, you know, implement crypto into their country and, you know, start getting that space uh, to towards the masses because, I mean, from what I've seen out here uh, during my time, I mean, if consumers are already using QR codes from their, you know, their bank accounts and stuff like that, I mean, they're ready to just go ahead. And all you got to do now is just slap up a logo as far as we accept Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency here, and you can do the same thing. So um, I know they got some politics going on right now as far as like the president stuff goes. So I've been like, you know, trying to... Try to learn a little bit, keep up with what's going on in the country as far as the economic stuff like that. But um, I do know from speaking with people out here, I know there's like a ton of people that don't even have bank accounts. And uh, some of these, <laughs> that's another thing, some of these bank fees that I've been hearing about and how much they charge, it's kind of insane, man. Like uh, banks really do take advantage of people and 
they're really trying to really recoup almost all, if not majority of people's money if they want to transfer it in or out, like depend on, you know, where they're sending to. So I think crypto can come in here and kind of get rid of all these different uh, these different tendencies and rules that banks have been, have been I should say, have established and that they're, you know, really strangling their, their people. Because, uh, I mean, if the number as far as how many people out here don't have bank accounts, it's, it's pretty astronomical. And it's like this uh, all around, you know, all these different Latin American countries. So I'm definitely curious to see, you know, how crypto may develop, you know, over here if it does develop. I mean, obviously around these neighborhood countries, it's already in that uh, progression. Like I said, tomorrow's gonna be a big day to, for Paraguay. And then obviously, um, definitely wanna see what Argentina does. Um, I also heard some rumors about Chile as well. Um, but um, my time here so far has been, you know, pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's not ideal to be able to really, I guess, uh, see what everything Peru has to offer during the lockdown. Um, don't know how long I'll be out here. I might be out here for maybe one more month uh, before I go back home and maybe head to another country uh, to do some more crypto business, stuff like that. But um, yeah, guys, uh, for those of you that might be listening, um, have been thinking about maybe you know taking a trip to Lima, I would say you do it. Obviously, try to do it maybe during the summertime, you know, or obviously try to do it when everything's a little bit more open um, to really, I guess, get the full grasp of the country. But um, I would say the culture has been great. Obviously, um, I found that some people actually do speak some English out here and some of them speak it pretty well. So uh, the language barrier for me has been a little bit tough at times, obviously, but um, as far as just experiencing Lima to the fullest, I wish I could uh, do that. Um, obviously, I was thinking about maybe coming back out here what, during summertime. Hopefully by then, uh, it might be fully open. Hopefully, like, you know, COVID-19 and all that stuff has calmed down. So I'm not for sure if, if the vaccines have really been in place out here. Uh, but like I said, as far as uh, living off crypto, you can go ahead and check off Peru. <laughs> like I said, it's very doable. Um, and I have been sharing some of my experiences as far as, you know, the food and just kind of walking around exploring on some of my channels. So if you guys, you know, check out my YouTube or go to my, uh, my Minds blog, you guys will definitely be able to see, you know, all the different food I've been consuming, um, the beach. I mean, the city is... City's pretty cool, man. Like, I like the fact that uh, everything is pretty much, you know, walking distance, especially when you get to, uh, I believe it's called Miracolas, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, been doing a lot, a lot of exploring down there. Um, been just kind of, really just trying to uh, try out pretty much as much as I can uh, during my time here. So, like I said, I've been eating a lot. Probably got to change up the diet a little bit just for the fact that, you know, because I've been eating out, I would say, pretty heavily. But uh, it's kind of hard not to, um, just for the fact that when everything's so cheap and, you know, a lot of times that you order a meal back home, you know, you're paying, you know, 10, 15 bucks just for a meal out here. It's a completely different road. And some of the food uh, chains out here, that you would normally eat back home, I found it that out here is actually a little bit tastes a little bit better. I mean, I know this sounds crazy, and I know people are probably thinking like, "Well, why would you travel to another country and eat the same things, right? Same food restaurants that you're accustomed to back home?" Well, from my experience, as far as like you know traveling, um, I found it that sometimes, if not majority of the time. It actually tastes better uh, compared to the States. I'll give you a prime example. I know you guys are probably going to laugh, but like, I'm not the biggest KFC fan. But I went to KFC out here, and I was like, yo, 
<laughs> Why does the chicken taste better out here? Like, what? But it was really good. I, I, I was like almost in shock. Like, it actually tasted like chicken. Like, you know, in not that processed type of chicken. So, you know, maybe their ingredients are a little bit different compared to uh, the states. So, as far as, you know, what they're actually cooking and stuff like that. Gotta say, as far as uh, Inca Cola, man, that that drink right there is wow, pretty pretty good. I probably probably have become a addict to it a little bit because <laughs> uh, I normally don't drink soda, um, but I I can tell you this for the most part. Every time that I have like any type of meal or anything, if you know they ask me, you know, what kind of drink of choice. Nine out of ten times, if I'm not drinking alcohol, I'm pretty much drinking an Inca Cola. And then speaking of alcohol, uh, Pisco, um, which if I'm like I said, saying this correctly, is the nation's uh, tequila basically. And man, that stuff is smooth. Definitely will be taking me probably a couple of bottles back home before uh, I travel back. Um, and again, even. Going to like certain bars and stuff like that. I, uh, I actually went to this one bar where, yes, when I say this, you're probably gonna be like, nah, this, this is not true. It sounds too good to be true, but I was at a bar where everything was $2. Yeah, $2. Everything on the menu was $2, folks. And when I say I went crazy, I, I went crazy. I mean, I had like, uh, two hamburguesas, uh, some papas fritas, about four or five drinks. I mean, and uh, and that day I was actually watching the Peru versus, I believe they were, I think they were playing Paraguay that day. And again, food is outstanding. Um, the drinks were on point. Uh, it's almost to a point where I feel like I'm enjoying Pisco more than tequila. But I gotta, I would say I gotta, um, you know watch my consumption on that and then even too like i'm not really a beer consumer but i'm gonna enjoy everything the culture has to offer uh you know when it comes from drinks food you know trying these different brands and stuff like that brands that i've pretty much have never heard of and probably won't hear of unless you're probably in this country which is kind of cool um the way they kind of you know they they really like the fact that if stuff is made obviously out here, they're gonna try to keep it in house. They don't really, uh, I would say, share it with the world. So it's like if you want to enjoy some of these things, you gotta basically come out here, which is kind of cool. So um, obviously, you know, hopefully, I mean, obviously during my time, I probably won't be able to see it to the fullest, but it might be a chance where I might, you know. Traveling on over to Cusco, see Machu Picchu, um, that might be in the plans. But obviously, like I said, this is a business trip, and the business so far has been going pretty well. Yeah, so I think that's going to really wrap it up as far as this episode goes. I kind of just wanted to share with you guys my experience so far out here in Lima. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be out here for that long. I mean, I just have a, what, like a visa for like 90 days, so probably swing back to the states before like i said i head on over to the next country and that next destination i'm not sure where that might be but it's gonna be obviously off of crypto because like i said folks living off crypto it's it's reality it's it's very doable um and i know a lot of people it's funny most people would say that you know you're going to a country you don't have any cash well it's like yeah i don't have any cash but um, I've been maneuvering pretty well, just do all strictly do crypto. I mean, like I said, I've just been using my MCO card, uh, getting three percent cash back on everything, which is nice. And then, of course, if I need to flip on over to my uphold card, since that's the MasterCard uh, version, I can do that and still get my two percent cash back on Bitcoin. So. I think that's all I really have to report as far as Lima goes. Like I said, I definitely want to do some more exploring. Uh, hopefully, I get to see some other places as well. Um, and hopefully, you know, there might be some more sunny days ahead of us. Like I said, the times where the sun has been out, you know, it's been a, 
I would say a pretty much beautiful location just to kind of soak in everything and see the culture and see, like I said, like I said, everything it has to offer. Uh, got a chance to ride the bus for like, you know, what was it like a couple of seconds? Because even on the bus, you got to have like a face shield. So didn't get to ride it to a full stop. But I mean, like I said, I was able to just, you know, kind of get on the experience that a little bit. Um, and, you know, they do have Uber out here as well. So, you know, getting around the city has been pretty easy. Catching Ubers and pfft, the Uber prices out here is just, that's another thing, amazing. Because, you know, Uber back home, you're looking at, you know, $30, $40 to go to somewhere that's probably not even that far. But out here, you're talking about, I think the, the most I've ever spent on a Uber taxi might have been like $7, $8. I mean, it's, like I said, everything out here is cheap man so it's a good opportunity um depending on if you have like remote work and you're looking to you know show somewhere where it's the cost of living is cheap you gotta put a lima on your list um obviously probably will be i would say better to come during the summertime for those of you that enjoy the heat because you know i'm not the biggest fan of the cold um but you know it is what it is i'm enjoying my time out here um the more stuff that i do out here i'll definitely go ahead and share that with you guys but like i said if you guys want to see any of the pictures and videos that i've been you know taking while i'm out here just gotta head on over to my different social media channels to check on that but your host the wolf of crypto is gonna go ahead and get on out of here uh that's gonna wrap it up for us this episode goes um as far as what's to come in the future definitely gonna be hammering on these uh different uh, platforms in the DeFi world that I've been using for the last uh, about a good couple of weeks, really trying to figure out, you know, what's the best avenue route to really start to just boost the accumulation on some of these coins because, you know, quarter three has some interesting events going on. It's going to happen. Obviously, we got the BNB burn that's coming up pretty soon. I know Pancake just did their burn as of recently, so... Like crypto never sleeps, man. It's crazy, but living off crypto, like I said, folks, this is what I'm doing. That's my journey. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning into the podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, and until the next episode, y'all, this is your boy, the Wolf of Crypto. Take care.